Math class, and that's a great <laughs> question. My, uh, I wish we did a better job of this, guys. This is an education, like, across the world, across our own country borders, within our state of South Carolina, within this Christian school here, is that the subjects all go together. Like in this book here, like on this page that Tyler, oh, you guys probably see, uh, page 34, there are more words than there are numbers on that page, right? Yeah. You can almost consider this an, an English page. It's almost like an English, you gotta read all these sentences, you gotta uh, understand the different parts of speech, and then there are some numbers thrown in. Um, there's historical background. Where in the world did we even get this from? Like, who came up with this? When did they come up with it? That's history. And then obviously you can see, wait, this is not math only. This is science and math. They all go together. And they really all go together. Uh, understanding one helps you with the other. Understanding one more deeply helps with the others as well. I've been blessed to um, have someone have taught me that early on. Like, wow. You don't have to just know math for math. You need to know English for math. And today, Algebra 1 is going to experience that. With word problems, right? They not only have to know how to solve the equations, but they need to know how to write them from the words. And that's not easy a lot of times. That's yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry. And imagine that. What, what, is, what is going on here? And that's cool, guys, because they, they relate. In fact, I was looking at a science textbook um, a few weeks back, and I was looking at scientific notation. I'm like, hey, we're going to talk about that in my math classes. So it worked out. OK, why in the world do we use scientific notation? Well, we use it because we deal with very small and very big numbers. That's basically why. Like, what are you talking about? OK, some people have this misconception that all we really need are like the counting numbers. Like, if you can count to a thousand, you should be good for life. Well, you may be okay as in you can get by, but you won't understand a lot. You won't really get what's going on. In fact, I'm thinking here, the distance between me or the planet, let's just even say, and the moon is not a thousand something. It's several thousand. Uh, you could say several hundred thousand feet. Uh, you could say millions of centimeters. You can use very big numbers to describe that. But you're like, but you don't have to. I guess you don't. Well, how many cells are, does my hand, is my hand comprised of? That's several hundred thousand cells, just my hand. My whole body, I'm getting into the trillions, possibly billions, at least. There's a lot. So we need to use very big numbers to understand things. And we also needed to use very small numbers. I'm thinking, how thick is your page uh, page if you're on page 36 how thick is that like how many feet thick is that well zero, 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 yeah it'd be zero, very very seven, small how many centimeters even then it's like point maybe point zero 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 seven centimeters very very small you use those numbers it's there <laughs> so what are we going to do when we get those small big numbers here's what my solution was i'm going to give you a bad case of what you should do um, I remember in middle, uh, middle school, I had to write a lot of papers, kind of like some of you have to maybe. And I had to write these papers, and my teachers would say either you have to have 500 words, like in a paper, or it has to be two pages, double space, right? You get some of those. So I'm thinking, how am I going to fill up two pages, double space? I'm going to write some words that are fluffy. So like I would do um, United States of America, like if I'm writing a, a history paper, and I would write the United States of America. And the next time I could just say the USA or the United States, I would keep writing the United States of America. That gives me so many words, and I thought to myself, if I only did this 10 more times, I'd be all the way close to my word count. But with numbers, these really big numbers, they take up some space on my paper. And that's not too bad if I want to fill in two pages. Now, how many of you want to read a whole paper or two pages full of these big numbers? There's got to be a better way to write them. There's just got to be a better way to write them. And scientific notation gives me that. So I use it in the wrong way, like make, make things expand so that it takes up space. Use extra words so I can fill in that word count. But 
we like things to be succinct, just like you do. You don't want me to just blah, 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 blah. You only get to the point sometimes. Let's get to the point here. Okay, first thing I want you to write after that, ooh, um, is this right here. This is algebra, and this is read A times 10 to the nth power. Yeah, we thought zeroth was weird. We got nth power. <laughs> By the way, nth power, if you read any textbooks or math, like if you look at math text, textbooks, nth power is often found. So this is the first time you guys may have seen it. Do I know what A is specifically? No, it's a variable. Do I know what N is specifically? No, it's a variable. But we have limitations on the variables. So here's the first limitation for A. What does it say for A? A is a, is, excuse me, is any number such that, and then this, I give you these two inequalities. You're like, oh man. We haven't even talked really about inequalities, but let's see um, what this means. A is greater than or equal to one. So that means it could be one, it could be one, or anything above, above it, greater than, but according to this, it also has to be and A has to be less than 10. That's a restriction on the number A. Whatever A is, and you're like, wait, wait, what are, you, what are you trying to say, Mr. A? Here's what I'm trying to say. This number in scientific notation has to be between 1 and 10. That's basically what I'm saying. Just between 1 and 10, could it be 1? Yes. Yes, because it could be equal to 1. Could it be 10? No. no, because it has to be less than 10. So just think of a number between 1 and 10. 1 can count. That's a restriction on A. Okay, Kaden. So why does that have to be <coughs> below 10, like in the middle of 10? Like why can't it be above? Yeah, good question. Like why wouldn't we say above, or maybe why don't we say like above, below 20 or 100? Why does it have to be that? Well, there's something special about a scientific notation number, and it has to do with the number 10. Oh. We'll, we'll see why. So I haven't answered your question fully, but I'll, I think I can answer it in a bit. Yep, Jimbo. So, Don, well, say the problem was A times 27 to the A power. Would that number down there change? Or? Good question. So if it's in proper scientific notation, ready, guys? You have to have a number between 1 and 10 times 10 to some exponent. So this number has to be 10. These two numbers don't have to be 10. That one has to be 10. Like, has to be. What's the restriction on n? n is any integer. And you're like, what is an integer? Guys, chapter 2 is called the real numbers, right? You see the title, the chapter numbers. 2, real numbers. You're like, wait, there are fake numbers? No, they're called imaginary numbers. <laughs> there are numbers that are called imaginary numbers, and they're valid. We won't deal with those, thankfully, this year, maybe next year. Maybe this year, I don't know. Depends how I feel. Do you feel good? I do feel good. About it. Actually, we might, we might talk about this chapter. I might just bring it up. Uh, the imaginary numbers. But uh, what was chapter one about? Do you guys remember chapter one? Rational. rational numbers. So we went from rational, these categories right here, to now we're going with real numbers. And so it is going to get a little bit more complicated, but. We've already gotten part way there. Okay, Stella, sorry, back there. Um, when are we going to be able to, like, start doing, like, A times 10 to the nth power? Like, are you going to want this? Uh, yeah. Your wish is my command. Yeah. Uh, okay, I actually, love that. Not, like not yet. Yeah, but yes, we will be able to do it. Where are okay. we on the bridge? Of yeah, are we, are we in we're, we're back to arithmetic. We're back to arithmetic. When I gave you this definition, we looked at a sign saying, this is what's going to be over there on that other, other side. So we're kind of, we're on arithmetic side looking back at algebra. So you guys took a step, a few steps toward uh, algebra, and now we have to take a few steps back to kind of like, it's not that bad. I could do this. All right, let's go. That's what I, yeah, just kind of back and forth. Don't get too scared. All right. Uh, let's look at this number right here. This is 186,000, right? Just a normal number. This number is written in standard form. When I show this number to a second or first grader, they might go like, whoa, that's so big, but they understand it. That's standard form. 
I want to rewrite it into scientific notation form, which means I have to write it in this format. A times 10 to the nth power. I have to rewrite it in that format with the correct restrictions. You're like, you can't just do that? Well, let's try. Okay, first, sorry? I think it's the distance between here and the moon in miles. I think that's what it is. But, oh, I'm, it's just an example. Yeah, it's the first one, first example. example. So we're going to write a standard form number into scientific notation. So I want to go from here to there, and this is how I'm going to do it. Okay, listen up. First, identify where your decimal place is at. So I'm looking at this number, I'm like, Mr. A, there's no decimal place written, a decimal point written, but there's a decimal point there. Where is it? Caden? It's after the last unit. Yeah. When you're talking about a whole number or even an integer, the decimal point is always at the end of the number, right? So you've done well, you got step one down. That's it. Step one done. Okay. Now what I have to do, guys, is I have to change this number, and I'm putting in quotations, change this number so that it's a number between 1 and 10 just by moving the decimal point. So let me show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to move the decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. Okay, when I move the decimal 5 times, which seems kind of random so far, right? Like, why'd you pick 5? Okay, I move the decimal point right here. What's the new number that was formed? New number? One, yes, ma'am? 1.86. Okay, 1.86, right? And those other zeros, they drop out because you don't have to put 0, 0, 0 at the end of a decimal number. Okay, you're like, wait, okay, I see, I see how you got this number. Yeah. Now, I want you to notice 1.86 is not 186,000. They're not the same. But I can make them same by writing it times 10 to some power. So oh. I'm starting to get into the scientific oh. notation. And here's how we do it. <laughs> do you remember how many times I moved my decimal point? Five. Five times. You know what the exponent of 10 is? It's 5. This is the same number as this is. Okay, standard form, scientific notation form. You're like, why would I want to do that? I'll give you a couple reasons in just a moment. But we went from standard form, scientific notation form. But I don't believe it. Let's see. Okay, Audrey. Is this number right here between 1 and 10? 1.86, is that between 1 and 10? Yes. So that fits my first criteria, remember that. Okay, is 5 an integer? Yes. Is 5 an integer? Yeah, it's a whole number or it's opposite. Okay, does this right here, and here's a clincher, does this right here equal the original number? You're like, yeah, I guess, right? You're like, how would you know? Okay, does anyone know a 10 to the fifth? <coughs> 10 to the fifth power is, what is 10 to the fifth? It's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. It's 10 with five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. It's 100,000. Um, does someone have a, well, you shouldn't have one, but maybe you do, like out. Does anyone know what 1.86 times 100,000 is? Henry has a calculator on his watch. Okay. Anyway, go ahead and just figure that out. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, does anyone know what 1.86 times 100,000 is? Yes. So are these the same thing? Yes. Yes, we proved it, right? So this right here is good. Why would I want to do this? The first number was fine for me. I could have just said 186,000 and left it. Why do we have to go to scientific notation? Couple reasons, guys. Sometimes these numbers are really, really big or really, really small. Um, sometimes I don't want to keep writing this number. I'm going to write in scientific notation. You're like, but it doesn't matter this one. All right, hold, hold on to that. Um, I also want to be able to compare really big numbers and really small numbers very easily. So if I write in scientific notation, you're going to find out I can make things easier. And uh, some of you are going to forget what I just said. When I give you a problem like that, you're going to be like, oh, working it all out. And then I'll, I'll give it to you in about two seconds and show you how you can do it in about two seconds. Because we've written it in what form? Scientific, scientific notation. notation. So we like scientific notation, and so will you. Just give me 
for you. 20 minutes. All right. Yeah. Yes. Mary Addison. Um, the last page needs to be graded, and then you're, I'm all done. So it will go into facts by the end of today, and then you'll get them back what? tomorrow. No. Yes, ma'am. Katie? So why do you move a decimal five? Good so question. You oh, have to move it five? yes, great question. All right, critical question. Critical question. If you don't get this part, you're going to miss them all. Okay, ready? Okay, when I moved the decimal point here five times, you're like, I mean, did you just decide five times? Well, yeah. what if I moved it four times? What if I moved the decimal point? Is 18.6 between 1 and 10? No. Okay, so that wouldn't work according to scientific notation. What if I moved it six times, 0. 0.186? That's Is that between 1 and 10? No. The only, only place that I can go where it's a number between 1 and 10 is right here. So will you always move it five times, or will you always move it? No, it depends where on how you it. Where it is. Where it is. Okay, Thank you. We will. Okay, hold on, hold on, because we had like three, four answers at the same time. You move it so that this number becomes between, uh, goes between 1 and 10. All right. Every time. Every time. Every number. Yep. Oh, no. Same one. Wait. So some of you are saying the last one, Mr. A, just leave it 186,000. Don't make things harder. Okay. Yeah, you gotta go there and count, huh? Oh, I, so I'm I'm not asking how many times to move it. I'm asking what's the scientific notation form of this standard form? Point zero 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 zero. Yep, you read that. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Yes. Would it, it would just be 10 the third because there are only three zeros? And if you did. Okay, what would you be left with? What would be the number left when you moved it three times to the left? Do not move, move the decimal. Just do 10 to the third. Okay, so that 10 to the third means you moved the decimal three times. But you actually moved it. So you have to say 10 to the third. Okay, guys, let, can I get you in just a moment? All right, first step, identify where the decimal point is. All right, so I'm going to look over there. What? I found it, Mr. A. There it is. Oh. What is oh, those decimal points, they scare you. Oh, all right. I thought he was at the end of the number. Oh, I forgot. It's right there. Okay, sometimes the decimal point is right there. So don't move it. Don't, don't just say, oh, it was over here. No, no, it was right there. If it were a, an integer, yeah, it might have been back there, but the decimal point is right here. Okay, is this number between 1 and 10? No. no. I'm going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 spots. 8 spots, okay. So the new number would have been 2, right? Because if I put a decimal point right there, it's 2. And then times 10 to what power? Would you divide? Yes. Yes, you're correct, Caroline. No one's pointed that out in both classes, but let's see what that means. What does it mean that I divide by? Okay, it's not just to the eighth power, guys. It's to the negative eighth. Okay, that's why I was. I did it right. Okay, time out. I can't. Yeah, I'm gonna answer those. I want to answer that one right now. Once I get the quiet. I don't mind waiting. Listen, guys, some of you are curious. Some of you want to know this answer. Others of you may be thinking, I don't care. Well, if you don't care, show love to the one who does care. If you do care, show love to the others who do care. And even to those who don't care, just stay quiet so we can all get it, get over it for some of you, or get into it for those who want it. Why was it negative 8? Some people are like this. Well, you moved it to the right, so you got to go negative. You move it to the left, it's positive. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. Here's how you do it, guys. It's very intuitive. The first problem, the number was, the original number was 186,000, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, is that a big or small number? A big. big number. My definition of a big number is anything bigger than one, okay? Just anything bigger than one. That is bigger than one, so we're going to call it a big number. <laughs> And the exponent in scientific notation is positive. Yeah. Big numbers get positive exponents, all right? So on this, oh, on this last problem we just had, was this a big or a small number? Is it bigger or smaller than one? Smaller. 
smaller than one, it's got to get a negative exponent. That's all I'm going to say. What if it's one? Great question. So it's right at one? So did you move the decimal point any? No. No. Good point. No. Zero. Ah, I like that joke. Good Good point. point. Good point. I'm going to have to take that for my own. All right, anyway. Yes, Jim. So I, I like to, I, I think I said this once before, but uh-huh. like it's possible. If you're, if you're Only swivel knows, Jim. Really. Positive exponents by themselves. Like if you have five times negative five, which would be five times five. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. Be five to the second. Yes. Well, then five to the zero would be five divided by. Five. Oh, no, no, no. Five. Okay, good. You're so close. Five times, sorry, five to the zeroth is just a big fat one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then because it's like five divided by itself. Yeah. And then there's like no five. Okay. Yeah. I, I know what, like, five times one, five to the first is five. Yes. Five to the second is 25. Five times five. Mm-hmm. Five times 25. And five to the negative first would be. Yeah, what is it? Here we go. Great question. Who remembers what 10 to the 5th was? 100,000. 10 with five zeros. Yeah, so 100,000. 100,000. All right, great. Uh, I'm just asking this question because, Jimbo, this goes to your point. What's 10 to the negative 5th? Negative 100,000. Never mind. Negative all right, guys, listen up. Some of you aren't even looking. It's hard to listen with when you're looking at something else, getting distracted. Okay, 10 to the negative fifth, and we didn't talk, I don't want to get too deep into this, but some of you did get it. When you have a negative exponent, it doesn't mean the number's negative. It means you're thinking of this word. I'm trying to uh, Less show. Less than. Less greater than. Reciprocal. Reciprocal. Uh, well, how did you get the What name? this means. Yeah, stay, change, flip, reciprocal. This right here means this, one over 100,000. And you're like, wait, wait, wait. It's divided. Caroline, you, you said divided. You said you get divided. Yeah, what happened here was this. And guys, some of you are going to get this. I want you to get it. Some of you are not. That's okay. I want you to try. But 10 to the fifth means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, right? 100,000. 10 to the negative fifth also means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, but that goes in the denominator now. It gets flipped, right? Do you see this is the reciprocal? Of, oh. These are reciprocals of one another? So basically for like the 10 to the fifth power, there's basically a one underneath it. Just like, you don't write it like that. Yeah, yeah, you could put, yep. Now here, you're like, that doesn't make sense. Well, it actually does, ready? <laughs> multiplying, multiplying, by 10 to the fifth is the same thing as dividing by 1 over 10 to the fifth. And if you don't believe me, let me prove it to you right now. Ready? I have no number and no number. Ready? Stay with me. Yeah, that's... Okay, so look right here. I don't know the number that we're using. I'm just using an example here. Ready? A number divided by a fraction, right? Do you guys remember how we actually do those? We do stay... Change. What do we do? Flip. Flip. So isn't that the same, right? Same thing. And so, guys, this is not new. This is not new. And that's not new. That's not new. Sorry. Uh, some of you got. Some of you didn't. I I threw the seed and see who gets it. Chris. Did you get the eight part? No. Yeah, you want to move it. Listen up. So why did we move it eight times? Guys, I can't go over you. I can't yell over you. Like, I can't, uh, even if I want to. So I got to move it eight times. So you see I end up right here. Why did I move it seven times? I mean, I, I would have ended up with 0.2. And is 0.2 between 1 and 10? No. All right, what if I went 9 over? That would give me 20. Is 20 between 1 and 10. No. So the only spot that it could fit is right here. Okay. So I make it 2. So that's a good first number. 
and I moved it eight times, and you're like, okay, I get eight, but why negative? Because this was a small number, small one. See, I, people say that, but it's actually, it's, it tricks you when you're going the opposite way. So I would stay away from that, because you're going to see it in just a moment, how it messes you up. Do this one on your own. Yes. While you're asking questions. Yes. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Stella. Go ahead, go ahead. It was a small number. Because it's a negative, because it's a decimal. Yeah, and you remember my definition of small number, it was less than one. Okay. Right? That whole number was less than one. Negative exponent. Okay. Yes, ma'am? Okay. So I think I've got a whole thing of negative exponents. Yeah. Okay. So I have to multiply that by negative eight, then ten to the eight and stuff. Until you drew that thing. Okay. Now I'm confused. Sorry. Okay. So here with this one, so you don't have to know that. You don't have to. If you can do that, you're good. Okay, before you get it, Caden, I'm going to ask Madison, is this a big or small number? Small number. Matthew, do I have a positive exponent or negative exponent in my answer? Negative exponent. Okay, how many times should I move it, Camille? Three. To the? To the negative. One. Three to the right. Three to the right, good. So I get 4.5. Okay, that's my first part. Reese times 10 to what power? Negative 3. Negative 3. Why negative 3? Why not positive 3? Because it's under the smaller than 1. That's all you get. So 0 would be negative. Yeah, I don't even write it. Yep. That's not plus. 4.5 is not Yes, that's correct. No, remember, 4.5 has to be between 1 and 10. Some people say Yes, but it's not smaller than 1. Oh, sorry. 0. 0.0045. You're looking at the top number for the next Yes, you are. Okay, then that makes sense. Oh. 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 All right. What you're going to do, guys, shh, write this number down, please. Um. You have to identify where that decimal point is. All right, so you're like, uh, I don't see one, so where does it have to be? At the end. It has to be at the end, so it's going to go right down there. All right, and then I have to move the decimal a certain amount of times. So there's only one spot it's going to fit so that it makes this a number between 1 and 10. So tell me when to stop, somebody. Stop. Okay, so right here, right? It goes right there. Because I get 5.765, right? And that is between 1 and 10. So that's a good spot to, to stop at. And then to finish up the scientific notation, it's going to be times 10 to something, some power, positive or negative. Why positive? Because it's a big number. All right. So it's a big point number. So that's it. That's, you're just done with that. What is 10 to the Sorry. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, never mind. Okay, that's all right. I was thinking of fractions. <laughs> so do you guys notice here, you notice that you're multiplying, you're move, making it a big, it, it was a big number. If it were a negative exponent, you're technically dividing it, but they're they're related. Yes? Do you guys like the restriction things always stay, stay the same? Mm -hmm. it's a, this number has to be between 1 and 10, and this has to be an integer to make it proper. Like you could not make it between one and 10, but then you would have to make it into the proper format. That could, that's later on, that's next year. Yep, very awesome. So, um, is this all we're gonna have to do in our homework? No. <laughs> Good question. All right, the second type of problem you're gonna have is they're gonna give you this right here, and they're gonna ask you, they're not going to say, guys, they're not going to say on this problem, write it in scientific notation. You're going to be like, uh, it is? So what do you think you're going to have to do with a number that's already in scientific Make notation? It Make it into standard form. Oh my gosh. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. First step, identify where the decimal point is. And thankfully, it's pretty much always in the same spot. Okay. Then you're like, whoa, whoa. I know I got to move the decimal point one way or the other. But is it left or right? And people get the left, right, and then you got to switch it for this. Okay, hold on. Is this a big or small number? It's a big one. It's a big number. So am I going to move it to the left? The right. 
Am I going to move it to the left? No. No, because that's going to make it a really small number. So you got to move it. Right. So I take the number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And again, some people say you have twelve zeros. Not necessarily. Yeah, good. So that. And you knew it was a big number because that exponent was not only positive, but it was a higher positive number. Like it wasn't just five, it's 12, seven more zeros on that one. All right, when you write your numbers, guys. You gotta put your desk or uh, commas. I yeah. want commas where they belong. One trillion. Yeah. 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 So I got one question and many people talking. I'll wait, Jim, but I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I did this a different way. I got the I got the decimal number, 1.4, mm -hmm. and I moved the decimal point one to the side, and depending on how many times I moved it, I subtracted that from the exponent. And so you're left with 11? I was left with 11, and then and just, just 11, 11 zeros. zeros. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is what you're doing. Yes. Yes, ma'am? Okay. So this number. Yes, ma'am. Did you say it? 14 billion? No. And... That's not 14. One, <laughs> one trillion, four hundred billion. Okay, it's one trillion, four hundred billion. Yeah. Yes. yeah. You can, you can what actually, you say? the other, other ways you could say it, you could call it 1,400 million. You could, or sorry, 1,400 billion. We don't hear that as often, but the technical Wait, name is right. one trillion, four hundred billion. Quad trillion. Okay, let's go. One trillion, four hundred Too many zeros. Just listen, do these little jumps. That'll help you see it. Uh-oh. All right, guys, write this one in standard form. Standard. So, yeah, I can answer your question. Ma'am? Yeah, you just move the decimal. I thought it would be more, you know, like, kind of like, It's very, that's, see, we like scientific notation because all you're doing is this. Yeah. Fill in zeros. We like it. Good way to start chapter two. Yes. All right. So, look at the number here, nine. It has a decimal point. You're going to move it how many times? Three. To the? Right. 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 One, two, three. And it's to the right because it's a big number and it's just 9,000. It's 9,000. That's it. That's all it is. All right. The next problem type you're going to get. Behold. Behold. All right. I want you to give me which comparison symbol fits in this little spot here. Um, Go ahead and write the problem, though. Write the problem. Oh, wait. And don't call it out. Don't say what the answers are. Just go ahead and work it out. I'll give you about 10 more seconds. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Two more minutes for you guys. I know what you're doing. It either take you two minutes or 10 seconds. I did it in my head. It's been six seconds. Easy peasy, one. Wait, I didn't totally leave my mind. Don't say it. Oh. Don't say it. Okay. <laughs> I just realized that. Was yeah. You uh, just make sure. Oh, wow. Write the numbers down. It. Okay. Wait. It took me 10 seconds. Cool. It took me 10 minutes. No, no, no. Just look at me. I just did it in my head. Okay, listen to me carefully, guys. Some of you are um, changing this in the standard. You'll do this in the standard. Maybe you've done it. Okay. But, but look at the numbers, guys. You know this is a big number, right? And you know that's also a big number, right? And you know that this one's bigger. Done. Wait, what? I didn't know. I didn't have to do any of that. Here's 10 to the 6th, 10 to the 4th. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. And this one would have been one, two, three, four. So I'm like, ooh. Right? Isn't that right? So when you're comparing two numbers in scientific notation and they have different, excuse me, they have different exponents, just look at the exponents. Six is greater than four, that's it, you're done. Really? Yeah, that's it. So all the time. All the time. If they're different, exponents. What do you mean if they're different? What's our homework? Page? Here's the other type of problem you'll get, Sammy. Yep. Now do it. Do it again. No, it gave you practice with the other part, but now see if you can do this. What? All right. The next person I see talking without permission, we'll have more to do later. Hopefully you guys are writing this problem down because I just gave you a new one. Um, and then you're just trying to compare them. So you tell me less than, greater than, or equal to. It's one of those three. In fact, um, the fact that two numbers are either the same, one's bigger than the other, is called trichotomy. Any two numbers you can think of in your whole entire life, any two numbers are either going to be the exact same number One's big, the first is bigger than the second, or the first is less than the second. That's it. Those are your only options. In all of the existence, that's how you can compare two numbers. Those three symbols. Okay, but they have the same x. They are not equal to one another. And you can figure out very quickly which one's bigger or which one's smaller, however you want to look at it. Okay, uh, Caroline? Um. Smaller than? Yeah, less, less than? than. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's less than. Why? Do you figure it out because, um, like, it's like, so that was 6.3, and that was obviously, like, smaller than 6.4. Yeah. So you just look at those. Just look at the decimal numbers. Right, sixes are the same. You move to the tens place. Oh, that's smaller than that one. Done. So will that, like, always work for everything? If they're the same exponent. Yeah. So you notice how you can do it easily? Okay, time out. If you wrote out these numbers, you could still see which is bigger and smaller, but you'd have to rewrite them out. This one, you're just looking at, you just looked at that. And the last one, you just looked at that. You were done, right? You like scientific notation? Yeah. No. No. You want to rewrite them at all? Wait, wait, wait. Why is it not equal? Um, because 6.3 is not equal to 6.456. What's the, 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 the exponents? Yeah, they're the same. That means they have the same place value but they have different digits in those place values. But, wait, but for the other problem, we looked at the exponents. Because they didn't have the same exponents. The exponents weren't equal in the other ones. So this yeah, so there's cool. two scenarios. The exponents are the same. Here we go. You just look at the decimal numbers. And the other scenario, the exponents are different. Just compare those. I want you to give me these numbers from least to greatest. These three, from least to greatest. And please, don't go the hard route. <laughs> so least to greatest, not greatest to least, least to greatest on this one. Least, so smallest number first, then, yeah, so don't give me a bigger. I least. We're not I mean, you could tell me that, but that's, that wouldn't be true. So if you write the whole thing, it would be true. So if you said 8.7 is bigger than 9.35, I'm like, no, it's not. Like, so yeah, the smallest one comes first on this. Smallest one. Oh, I just did it backwards. Is that okay? No. Just write arrows? Just rewrite it. Thankfully, we have pencils that erase. Or not. I don't really have pictures. Okay, I hope you can see that the smallest number out of these three is Jimbo. 9.35. Yeah, so that's the first one. That's the smallest number. And you're like, how do you know? Least to greatest, yes. I think I said that 10 times. That's okay. And I'll say it again. Least to greatest. 
the nine is bigger than the eight and the seven, how can yes. the less zero make it? Yeah, because nine is a whole number, so nine is bigger than the whole number eight. What? Nine yep. is bigger than because if you you're seven, correct. I do not get you're correct that nine is bigger than seven and eight. I don't disagree yeah, that. Yeah, so that how is that the least? But, but how is that the least? Power? Look at the, like, nine, exponents. Six, yeah, look at the yeah, excellence, too. Yeah, but wouldn't it, wouldn't you the whole them, when you make them all, you do them in standard form, and not in So that's what we were talking about in those last two examples. Wait, so how do you know which one is second? Because both of the excellence. Great question. All right, so now I'm left with these two. Now I'm left with these two. They have the same exponents, don't they? So I'm not looking at the exponent because they're the same. Now I look at the decimal number. And so which one's smaller? A. That's okay. That would be your second. Leaves you with your third. But wait, wait. Yep, waiting. So, so if so you look at the excellence. First, look at the excellence, yes. Okay. And so you saw it, you're like, okay, smallest. Then, if they're the same, look at the decimal. So that's your order of figuring it out. Okay. You may begin. Yes! Ooh, that's only six. <laughs> uh -huh. Say that one more time. It's not that bad. Go ahead. Wait, okay. is that pages or numbers? The 42, 44, 53. Is that numbers? No. Oh, those are individual. Yeah, so yeah, you do, have to do page 12 to 24 oh, even, and then numbers 42, 44, and 53. Okay, goodbye.